Hey everybody, we are going to walk through a quick example of how to estimate an ARIMA slash GARCH model in Stata. So we're not going to get into the details of the theory behind these models. So hopefully you've you've done your homework, you've read your book. All right. You got the basic idea of, of what these models are doing. Um, so again, it's the auto regressive integrated moving average, the ARIMA. And piled on top of that is the generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity model for the variance. I know, a lot going on there. Um, so just as a quick reminder in terms of what we'll be looking at here, when we think of the ARIMA model, right, that's going to be applied to the dependent variable, right? So the goal there is to get the best estimate, the best prediction, the best forecast of the variable itself, whether that be an asset price, an asset return, an interest rate, whatever the time series variable is that you're focused on. The example we'll look at will be uh, a simple asset return. Uh, and it might look something like this. We'll estimate it as an ARIMA 101. So one lag of the auto regressive, one lag of the moving average, and we're not taking the difference here since this is already the return. So we got a zero in the integration column there. So again, the whole idea here, we want to get a optimal forecast, right? An estimated return tomorrow, right? That would be the goal of that equation. However, the Garch model looks at the volatility, the variance of that error term as an additional variable to be predicted, to be forecast. And if we do in fact follow an autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity pattern, then there is a data generation process, an equation that we can take advantage of. And that's what the Garch model does. So it adds that second layer to our estimation, right? And a Garch 1-1 would look something like this, where the variance of the error term, the sigma squared at time t, is going to follow essentially an ARMA process, right? Where playing the role of the auto regressive is going to be sigma squared t minus one, right? So the lag of the dependent variable, which is the variance, and playing the role of the moving average, the lag random shock, is going to be the square of the error term itself, right? So the idea if we could get estimates for our Garch coefficients, we can do the same thing that we want to do with the mean equation, with the arm equation for the return, get a prediction, get a forecast of that variance or that volatility. So let's jump into Stata and see how this is going to work. So we'll start from scratch here uh, and we'll go get some asset return data, let's say Apple stock. Uh, and here we are in uh, October. 2020. Uh, so we'll start our data set in 2019, October, so first year 2019, first month 10, and we'll get this from Yahoo, and we'll declare our time series here. So we'll generate a time trend underscore in, tell Stata that that is our time series indicator, TS set T. Uh, and then we'll generate the return, call it R, as the difference in the adjusted close. This is daily data relative to the one period lag, so just the simple percentage change. Okay, so that is the variable, right, that we're going to try to predict with the ARIMA model. So let's just take a uh, take a wild guess and run this as an ARIMA like we had it written out. So ARIMA R, and we'll do it as a 101. If you haven't done any, uh, any background uh, diagnostics and you just want to take a wild guess at what your ARMA model is going to be, an ARIMA 101 uh, is a good place to start, assuming you've established stationarity. So we'll let that crank through the likelihood optimization. And we do in fact see a significant coefficient on the auto regressive. The moving average is not significant. So our 
primary concern is to kind of figure out if we have enough in our model that we've reduced the residuals down to pure randomness. We've extracted all of the predictive information we can out of that. So we'll follow this up with the predict command. We'll get the residual. So go predict u hat comma resid. And then we'll throw that into the correlogram, right? looking for significant correlations and hoping that we don't find them, right? So this is looking pretty good, right? So we, that Q stat is telling us whether or not our autocorrelations are jointly significant. So all the way out to lag eight, we don't find any significance. Then all of a sudden we see these spikes and at lag nine, we do have joint significance. So the, the randomness kind of breaks down and past this point, we have significant autocorrelations. So that tells you, well, we're close, right? But our ARIMA 101 seems to have missed out some past information, right? So a nice way to think about this is when you see, like in this case at lag nine, we see the joint significance begin. We see these spikes. I always picture that, that old uh, carnival game of whack-a-mole, right? Where it pops up and you got to hit it back down. Well, that's what this guy does. When you see that pop up like that, you can put in a moving average lag at that point, basically accounting for that correlation. Now, there's not necessarily a theoretical justification for why a change in the asset return on Apple stock nine days ago correlates with what that stock is going to be today, but it happened enough in the data that it came out to be a significant point. So what I would do at this point is go back to the ARIMA command and put in the AR term, so AR1, that was doing some work for us. And instead of doing moving average lag one through nine, we just throw in the ninth lag. So the AR1, that first lag, and then the MA9, just the ninth lag. And we'll let it run, da, 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 da. Okay, so our AR term is still significant. Now that MA9, also significant, let's, do the same thing, so predict another residual, we'll call this 1.9. If I remember where, which model that came from. Comma resid, throw that into the correlogram at 1.9, and we're hoping for, ha, this, no significance. So that p-value on the Q stat, all the way down, no significance at the 5% level. This guy peaks under the 10% level. I'm not gonna worry about that at lag eight. So the good news is we have arrived at seemingly a properly specified optimal ARMA model. And if you haven't read the chapter yet on heteroscedasticity and arch garch models, you would think you were done. But now that we've read that chapter, we know there's another again, another layer of information that we can take advantage of. To, to look for evidence of that arch slash garch process, we look now at the correlogram of the squared residual, which is the stand-in, the proxy, the estimator for each periods, in this case, each day's return variability, capturing the, uh, the magnitude of the, the random shock to the asset return. And if those are correlated over time, that's evidence of conditional heteroscedasticity. And that tells us we can take advantage of it with an arch or garch model. So all we have to do is generate a new variable, call it u hat one nine underscore sq. So this will be the square of the residuals from our successful ARMA model. So u hat one nine to the second power that into the correlogram, u hat one nine underscore sq. And oh my gosh, look at that. All the way down, we've got significant Q statistics, right? So we've got all these spikes saying the magnitude of the shock in the past is heavily correlated with the magnitude, the magnitude of the shock today. When the market was volatile in the past, it's going to predict it to be volatile in the future. Variance was low in the past, it's going to be low 
the next period. So that, all you have to see is significance in the squared, squared residual correlogram. That tells you that a, an arch model of some type is going to be potentially successful. So how are we going to take advantage of this? Well, we can run this with the arch command in Stata. So we're still applying it right to the, the Y variable, the dependent variable here, the asset return. But now we have to specify four different things, right? How many lags of the autoregressive in the mean equation? How many lags of the moving average in the mean equation? How many lags of the arch term, the squared residual, in the variance equation? How many lags of the garch term, the autoregressive, in the variance equation? So our model is going to look something like this. So we'll match what we had, even though your specification might change when you add that second layer, but we'll match what we had. So we'll have the AR1, the MA9, and then we'll put in an arch one and one lag of the GARCH. So match it up with that GARCH11 model. And okay, so this second layer down here, this is the arch equation. Everything is significant. So the squared residual correlogram wasn't lying to us. There is significant predictability in the variance term. But look what happened. The significance of the ARMA coefficients have disappeared. Essentially, what they were picking up was this volatility effect. We can think of this whole uh, variance equation as having been introducing omitted variable bias, right? Because we weren't accounting for that volatility effect. So that was being picked up in the ARMA equation. But once we account for that, well, now what this says is, okay, we're not going to be able to predict what the return on Apple stock is going to be tomorrow. That prediction equation doesn't have any significant coefficients in it, but there's a something we can salvage. We can predict what the variance is going to be. We can generate an out of sample forecast of that variance equation. And we can do it like this. So this will just be the in sample, because uh, I didn't I didn't do like an ex post um, estimation sample. I didn't save any observations to predict, but the within sample variance equation would look like this. So we go predict, call it variance of Apple, comma, variance. So it's the same command we use all the time, the predict command. But if we use the uh, option variance and apply it following a Garch model, we will get this new variable here, variance of Apple. And we can Get the visual off of that, bring it up as a time series plot. And this is what our model was picking up, right? That we have these extended periods of high volatility surrounded by extended periods of low volatility, right? And then we've got this kind of moderate period here. But again, from an investor's point of view, from an analyst's point of view, this would be great information to have, to know in a forward looking out of sample forecast sense, right? what's the most likely scenario here out of sample, right? Are we going to be extending this moderate level of volatility? Or are we going to be heading into a period of high volatility? Well, that's what the Garch equation is going to give us, the ability to out of sample predict what that return variance is going to be. So good stuff. Uh, hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know if, if you have any questions and we'll see you next time. Thanks.